To draft a sleeve, you're going to start by grabbing your rectangle tool. You're going to left click down to get the precision box. And I like to make a square that's the height and width of my sleeve length. So here I'm doing one that's 23 inches. Using edit pattern, you're going to measure the full length of your armhole by holding shift and selecting each segment. You'll see the total number on your cursor. This is going to tell you your sleeve cap height. You're going to divide your entire armhole by three for a standard sleeve cap, like a set-in sleeve. If you have a drop shoulder or you just want a shorter cap for more lift in the sleeve, then just divide it by a higher number, four or five. To mark the cap height, you're going to use edit pattern and right click on the top edge and offset as internal line. And then you'll enter in your cap height. Now you need to measure one of your armholes. I'm going to start with my back and then you grab your internal polygon tool and starting somewhere around the middle at the top and going towards your sleeve cap line, you're going to draw a line that's almost exactly the length of your back armhole. So as close as you can get, the more you zoom in, the closer you'll be able to get to that exact number. Then I'm going to measure my front armhole and do the same on the right side. Using edit pattern, you're going to select these two endpoints and you're going to right click on one of them and choose extend or trim and add point to internal line. Then select that line and right click and choose split. Select uniform split and two and it will put a point in the middle. This is how you mark the center of the sleeve. So now I'm going to draw a short little line at that point with my internal polygon tool and I'm going to extend and trim it and add a point to the pattern outline on each side. Now we're going to right click on the bottom and mark the points for our hem. So we're going to split it evenly on either side of the line. My hem is going to be four and three eighths on either side. So eight and three quarters total. Now you'll draw in the sides of your sleeve from these bicep points, connecting them to the sleeve opening. To shape the cap, right click on the back armhole marking and choose split. We're going to choose uniform split and split it into three sections. On the front armhole, you're going to split into two uniform sections. Right click on this top back point and choose convert to curve point. Then we're going to grab our edit curve point tool to shape the cap. Start by left clicking to add curve points in the middle of these three sections. Then we're going to click and drag our curve points to shape the cap. Starting at the top, I'm going to hold shift and go out at a 45 degree angle and tap my right click to enter in 3 quarters of an inch or 2 centimeters on both sides. At the bottom back armhole, I'm going to do the same thing but drag down and enter a quarter of an inch or 0.6 centimeters. At the front saddle, you can drag in 3 eighths to a half inch or 1 to 1.2 centimeters. Then you want to add a curve point and drag it up to match that center line of the sleeve head. If your curve is bumping out over the edge of the pattern, you can marquee over these two points and drag them down just enough so that it lines up with the top of the pattern. Now it's just about refining the sleeve head shape. So I find what works best for me is adding some points around the original curve point at the front saddle and carving that out just a tiny bit more. At the top, you might need to bump this up a little bit and smooth out that top edge. I marquee over these two points and right click to join them together so that I can move them around. If you convert this to a curve point, you might find that you want to add it back as a segment point later. So I'm going to grab my notch tool and put a notch here because this is the point where the sleeve head should meet the shoulder seam. This is where your front and back armhole meet. It's not at the center of the sleeve. So this point is really important to keep marked properly. So here I just add a curve point at that top bit to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to add one at the back to make it smooth from the center line and I bring in that saddle just a tiny bit more at the back. 
These are very small little incremental changes. Just do whatever you think is best or copy what I'm doing if you're not sure. Now you'll grab your trace tool and holding shift, you'll select all of the outside pieces of the sleeve pattern. Then you right click on one of those lines and choose trace as pattern. I realized my notch didn't copy over, so I'm selecting order bring to front on my sleeve pattern so that I can bring it over top of my original and use that as a reference to add a notch to the new pattern. Using edit pattern, I'm going to select these outer points on that bicep marking and just hit delete. Then I'll grab my add point split line tool and click on that center line to add a point. Then I'm going to drag it down where my bicep line meets. This is so that I mark out my cap so I can easily measure the cap when I'm clicking on the center line. Now I'm going to select both sides of the bicep, right click, and choose offset as internal line. I'm going to put a marking at 1 inch and a marking at 7 inches. These are the standard markings in tech design for measuring the bicep and elbow, so I like to mark them out. Now I'm going to draw a line 3 inches down from the top and then a horizontal line at that point. I'm holding shift to make these straight. And the reason that I make this line short and then trim it to the pattern outline is I just find it's easier than trying to click directly on the pattern edge. I then delete the marking that goes three inches down and this horizontal line is my marking for the cap width at the standard measurement. Now we need to add notches to the sleeve to match our armhole. So to start, I'm gonna select that previous segment point and convert it to a curve point as well as the one on the front sleeve cap. If you ever find that converting a segment point distorts your line, the easiest thing to do is add curve points on either side pretty close and then convert it to a curve point. And then you probably wanna delete that curve point so that you don't have too many curve points close together. Before we add our notches to the sleeve cap, I've decided to put back a segment point where my notch is at the top like we discussed before, so I'm going to use add point split line and just click where the notch is on the pattern. I usually add my notches with the notch tool, so I'm just measuring my notch on my body pattern and I right click with the notch tool just like splitting a line and add the notch at the same distance. You can easily do this with the walk pattern tool, I just kind of always forget to use that tool because I find it pretty clunky. Um, but it's definitely easy to use for this purpose. The annoying thing about the notch tool in Clo is it doesn't acknowledge the notch ahead of it. So when you're doing two notches side by side, you have to split the line at the total length. So I can't do just like 0.4 inches. I have to do the total from the underarm. If you're not an experienced pattern maker, this is just a reminder. The notches on the sleeve cap are the same distance from the underarm as the notches on the armhole. To sew a sleeve properly with ease, you sew up to the notch on either side and those are gonna be equidistant. And then you sew from the notch up to the shoulder tip and that's where I sew to my notch on my sleeve, not the center sleeve line. Then you can segment sew your under sleeves together and use arrangement points to arrange your sleeve. Lastly, right click on your pattern and choose clone symmetric pattern with sewing and then your sleeves are finished.